lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I am here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? Doing all right. Did you have a good Thanksgiving? I did. It was good. Good, good to see the family, do yeah. the whole thing. Nice. So, yeah. Nice. How about you? It was a quiet one for us. It was just me and my mom. Yeah. Um, and it was nice. We ate well. That's always good. Uh, there was football on. I didn't really care about it, but she enjoys it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, definitely watched plenty of football. There was no no, no problems there. Uh, I hope I hope all the listeners out there had a great Thanksgiving. Um, nice, relaxing time. It was nice to have a day. I, that was a day I actually did not work. Oh, wow. So, yeah, I don't normally... Like, I had... I worked that day. Like, I went in and worked that day. Mm-hmm. But the only day I really don't have to do anything like that would be Christmas. Like Christmas with the stores closed, like there, there's no getting phone calls or distractions on Christmas. Yeah. It looks like the people that send me work to do for my work yeah. took the day off. So <laughs> pretty unusual, right? Yeah. I checked email a couple of times. That counts, I guess. I did yeah. sort of work. Yeah, but, but I didn't have to if, sit down at the I was going to say, it anything. doesn't count if there wasn't nothing there. That's on you for checking it. No, I disagree. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> I disagree. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's working. Is it? E- even if it's just a few minutes. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's working. Wow. Not working is not even have to worry about that at all. Yeah. Wow. I mean, because the truth is that if I if stuff had come in and I had not checked my email, yeah, I would be responsible for having not done the work. Yeah. So I, I disagree. Well, that's a crappy system then. Yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> that, that would be my response to that. <laughs> there's been a bit of a discussion about that today, actually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the um, question of what happens when I go out of the country. Yeah. And um, the the boss man's real concerned about security and doesn't want me accessing things outside of the country and i'm like yeah but then the work just doesn't get done like this is important <laughs> things that need to be done and nobody else yeah. can do it yeah so is that yeah. what you want <laughs> 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 not real happy with that answer either yeah. um and yeah. uh and from it, my like, perspective that just means well we need somebody else that can fill your shoes when you're not available yeah well that's also what he said but that can't be done in the next couple of days well no obviously not but and the, for future <laughs> reference like I think he actually thought that there was somebody that could fill my shoes yeah um, but I, as, I, as we some, don't really have backups for anybody I don't think yeah I mean not somebody that could just like step, step in step in and do it and yeah. do all their work I try to keep people cross trained enough that mm-hmm. when when one person steps out somebody else can step in yeah well and, I mean we have a small staff of highly specialized yeah no I get jobs. that yeah. it's a different kind of work environment no I definitely I get that but um Seems like there'd be a way though that you could cross train people. Like yeah. ma- maybe not like completely do what you do, but fill enough because that's kind of what I do. Yeah. Like do the we- invoicing, just like do the day to day. Yeah, kind of invoicing. Yeah, the thing. stuff. Yeah. Maybe not. Maybe not like the payroll in, but like some of the other stuff. You <laughs> I know? actually told. Uh, all right, so years and years ago, I guess this was two thousand eight. Ike Ike goosed off. Yeah. So the storms. Yeah. The relevant storms um, that hit Texas. Yeah. Wait. No, Har- yeah, no, Ike Gustav, that's right. I was thinking Harvey Irma, but that's the more recent one that... Yeah, uh, I remember Gustav, Texas, but I don't, I don't know where it hit. Texas, Florida. So Ike Gustav, they were both in, in Texas. And I think it was 2008. And um, our COO at the time went out to Texas with a, a small team of people to get uh, everything organized on the ground. Yeah. And he was checking systems all the time. And he was getting really frustrated with me because invoices would sit in the system for like an hour. Yeah. Like it's an hour. Yeah. All right. Right. Like I do other things. So, yeah. <clears throat> you know, I, I, I promise things aren't going to sit in there really any longer than that. Yeah. But that's not a big deal. <laughs> it's an hour. <laughs> All right. And then I, I guess he got so frustrated with going into the system and seeing that there were invoices that hadn't been done yet that he started doing them. Yeah. But he didn't know what he was doing. <laughs> oh, yeah. And so what ended up happening is that I would go into the system and I would see that he'd done some invoices yeah. and then I would see that he'd done them wrong. Of course. And then I would have to undo them yeah. and fix his errors and redo them and send it. And so I finally called called him up Yeah. in Texas 
Now, this is me talking to the COO. <laughs> and I said, um, if you have a problem with how quickly I'm getting this stuff done, then mm. you call me or you email me or whatever. You you see something in there that you want done right then, you you call me and I'll Let do it know. just as quickly as I can. Yeah. But do not <laughs> ever <laughs> do an invoice again because yeah. all that ends up happening is you take up three times as much of my time because I have to fix what you did. <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> and he like oh. snapped back at me and then he called me later and apologized. And, yeah. You know, so. I kind of miss him for that too because he was yeah. like quick yeah. temper, but... yeah. But also good about like fixing things afterwards. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's like, all right, like I, I just, I would, th- I want this stuff done as quickly as possible. I'm like, man, I'm doing everything I can just as quickly as possible. I'm all working right. twelve hour days. Yeah. I promise I'm working. Yeah, all right. <laughs> uh, um, so anyway, but that that was the the other thing. What you said was the other thing that that kind of came up is like, hey, boss man, like maybe instead of being upset about how you know this guy going to Europe is taking his computer and yeah. and you know going to work on this vacation? Yeah, maybe the focus <laughs> should be, hey, boss man, you got a guy that is going to Europe on vacation and intends to work every day. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> like maybe this is something that you should be happy about. Like let put a little positive spin on that. You know? Yeah, all right. Yeah. Uh, it means you've got the right person is what I would say. Yeah. And that's what I think is true of all our whole company. Like almost everybody there has been there a decade. Yeah. And they're the right people. And and know their jobs. Yeah. Yeah. And and feel because personally is, responsible for it, too. It, it is hard to find the right people. Mm-hmm. Like as somebody that does this a, a, for a living or more or less, like, yeah. you know, finding the right people is hard. <laughs> yeah. So. Absolutely. Well, um, let's get into it. You you had yeah. something you wanted to talk about. I, I mean, not really a whole lot, but I mean, I felt like it was kind of worth getting into Ukraine, at least for a little bit, which is odd coming from this side of the table because yes. you're normally the Ukraine guy. Um, but we've talked about it a bunch on the podcast about Boris Johnson going over and when, when the war started shortly after, after Russia had invaded. Yeah, a couple months in. Yeah, Boris John, or so... Not even, a month in, really. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was right at the beginning, mm-hmm. and, um, and, they, and Ukraine and Russia were negotiating, trying to find a resolution of this. Right. And um, Boris Johnson, like, we've talked about it a bunch, but I've seen it more the past week or so, like, in the mainstream media talking about it, that, like, Boris Johnson went over there and basically harpooned it. And was like, no, like, um, yeah, know. he said uh, what they reported in Ukrainska Pravda was that Boris Johnson told Zelensky, you may be ready to negotiate, but the collective West is not. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I don't know. It's just it's interesting now, years later, after, you know, the, yeah. the country's destroyed, mm-hmm. like they've lost all of these people, you know, and people have fled the country trying to avoid the draft and. Yeah. Like all these lives have been ruined, mm-hmm. and, and all these lies are being exposed about how well uh, Ukraine's doing in the oh, war. Oh yeah, well there's that. Like the the fact that this was never a winnable war. Like mm-hmm. I mean, and they, I mean, the collective West, as as you want to call it, um, knew that when they told um, Zelensky not to negotiate. It's not like this to the people that made these that decisions. True. They had to know. No, I think that there's, uh, I think there's a real hubris there. Yeah. I think that they really believed that Russia was a weak power, yeah. and that with, um, you know, with money and weapons, that Ukraine could defeat Russia. Yeah, I, I think that there's uh, plenty of people out there that believe that. It may that be true, but could I, kick I, Russia out of their country. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure there. You're probably right. It's probably a mixed bag because there's mm-hmm. there's probably plenty of people like you say that did believe it, but I think there's plenty that that didn't. Yeah, and that because, knew because the idea was was we were going to bleed Russia dry. Yeah, like like we can pour ru- more resources into this fight than they can. Yeah, which also doesn't seem to be true. <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> um, but but that was I think that was more of the plan than mm-hmm. you know. I think that that. We started hearing that more this year. Yeah. Um, so I, I think that that was just, I think that that was some people coming to accept the reality. Um, I, I think that they really believed at the beginning that they could, that Ukraine could win with support. Yeah. Um, I just, based on, on who was actually pushing this stuff. Because yeah. if you'll also remember, the, uh, 
the side of the U.S., the part of the executive branch that was pushing um, to keep the war on and not negotiate and so forth no. was actually the State Department, the diplomatic branch, yeah. not the Pentagon. Yeah, which is like backwards. <laughs> oh, uh, what was his, gosh, what's his name? There's the, the general, um, after the, the first counteroffensive that... Uh, Ukraine launched when they pushed Russia back a little ways. They yeah. had some break, some significant breakthroughs and pushed Russia back. Yeah. I mean, that was overblown a little bit. It was a, uh, it was thin Russian lines that it, it wasn't so much that the Ukraine went, excuse me, Ukraine went in and defeated the Russians and took back a bunch of territory as much as um, they attacked weak points in Russia's lines and Russia pulled back. Yeah. But anyway, to regroup, they, yeah. yeah, yeah. But they did gain a bunch of territory in that first counteroffensive. Yeah. Um, and I think it was Millie that I could be wrong about who exactly, but yeah. um, somebody speaking for the Pentagon said that now's a good time to negotiate. Yeah. You know, like essentially, like, well, you've only lost this much. <laughs> this yeah. is probably as good as it's going to get. Now's yeah. a good time to negotiate. And he was shouted down and ended up retracting that you yeah. know, later. Yeah. Um, the but powers that be probably got to him and was like, that's not the objective here at all. Yeah. Yeah. The, but the, <laughs> we're war not guys, looking out for the betterment of Ukraine here. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, the war department wasn't, wasn't the ones that was pushing the idea that Ukraine could win. It was the state department that was. Yeah. So, and I think that the war guys probably had a better handle on what the capabilities were than the State Department guys. Yeah, I would imagine, I'm, considering that's, you know, their area. <laughs> yeah, and I come back to the idea that I, I've expressed a couple of times on the podcast before, um, and I expressed to the guy in the bar in New Orleans uh, when we were talking about the situation, I wonder what he would have to say now um, when I was telling him that there was no way that Ukraine could win the war, and he was like, well, I don't think that's true. Well, yeah. <laughs> now, but um, we were talking about terrible political figures, and um, and I told him that, that my worst one was Anthony Blinken, that yeah. I thought that he was the worst uh, depart- uh, head of state since uh, John Foster Dulles. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and I, I think that that's kind of proving true now. And it, it, we see it again uh, in um, the Israel-Palestine uh, conflict that's going on, the, this current iteration of the Israel-Palestine conflict, because um, they sent Blinken over there, and he accomplished nothing. Um, and then they've gone back and they've sent, um, oh gosh, I can't think of his name, uh, the guy that used to be the... Um, ambassador to russia that's now the head of the cia oh, um i know who you're talking about but yeah i can't believe i can't think of his name uh, maybe it'll come to me yeah. i'm terrible with names as you all know though so maybe not <laughs> yeah. um oh, i was right on the tip of my tongue for just a second uh and then and somebody else too i think that's like a energy department something or other yeah anyway um, but they've sent these... Well, you know, the Department of Energy controls the nuclear weapons. Yeah. Just throwing that out there. <laughs> that's, yes, that's true. Um, I don't think that's the reason they don't why. Think that's, they don't think there's yeah, anything no, there. the reason why is because that guy used to serve in the IDF. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah, okay. I think that's the probably the reason that he was sent. He's already yeah. got Israeli relations. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm trying so hard to remember <laughs> just, that guy's just not the there, is CIA it? head's name. Yeah. Uh, oh, well. Anyway, um, th- those guys have been sent, like not members of the State Department, have been sent instead of the um, Secretary of State because the Secretary of State is terrible at his job. Yeah. Wow. And uh, continues to be. And yet, yeah. it's still there. <laughs> That's the world we live in. Yeah. So, um, so really what you were wanting to do was take a victory lap Well, about I, how we've been talking about this since April or beginning. something of last year. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it, the, not just that, though. Like, I just want people to kind of reflect that, like, this was preventable. 
Mm. Like in in the U.S. Yeah, there's a year and a half of war that could have been avoided. easily been avoided if us, like our country, hadn't have gotten involved and and pushed the other side. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's that's what irritates me the most because. Not even the fact that I mean, yeah, it absolutely could have been avoided. But to know that that the country that I live in that represents supposed to represent me would do that, mm-hmm. like it's it's just disgusting. Yeah. Well, the real question I think is why is it becoming uh, mainstream media reporting now? That's a very good question. Um, seeing you light up reminded me that I did not turn my phone off. So oh. uh, <laughs> yeah, mine's off, but it does. This flare up. Um, no, I, I, like I say, it is weird because it's all of a sudden kind of this narrative's kind of out there. Maybe because it's winding down and mm-hmm. we're switching to the next war. You well, know? It, but it doesn't serve any purpose in, in that way. It would be better yeah. to go quietly yeah, and not bring up that, that where we're heading right now is exactly where we could have been a year and a half ago. Yeah. Without all the extra losses and the extra expense on all of us. Oh yeah. Um so there has to be a reason that they're that they're reporting it now. Boris Johnson is essentially he's, he's out been already. Gone, yeah. Um yeah. so Which it's is not part to of the reason him. that I, I I do think part of the reason he was sent was because they knew he was at the end of his time anyway. Yeah. Um that's probably true. So. Um, so it doesn't, you know, embarrassing him though, doesn't matter. Doesn't now. fix is it, anything. Is it yeah. to embarrass the Biden administration because they just don't want Biden That's possible. to do a second term? Yeah. Um, I don't know. It, it, I mean, it can't be to embarrass the American war machine either because yeah. they just have too much the, influence. Yeah. Well, and they're shameless but, anyway. Well, yeah, there's that. <laughs> so. Cat's over there tearing up my furniture when he knows I won't yell at him because I got a microphone in front of me. Yeah. Uh, Gotta love it. <laughs> pretty clever, that one. <laughs> a little bit. Um, so, I don't know. There's uh, That just seems like the obvious answer is that, you know, try to embarrass the Biden team so that maybe they don't run again. Yeah. Uh, I don't think that's stopping them. No, I was going to say that's not going to work. Public cares enough. No, um, it. Uh, yeah, I would agree with that. Mm-hmm. Um, unfortunately, yeah. I mean, we're just so the American people are just so used to us being involved in other places. Mm-hmm. And well, I don't even think it's that. I think that the because we're involved with, in other places without actually being involved. Yeah, that most Americans, it's just not. It's just irrelevant to them. Yeah, yeah. Except, uh, yeah, no, there's something to And that. they don't connect the poor economy, like inflation and so forth, with all the money that we're spending on wars all over the place. Yeah. Um, and as long as, as they don't have family coming home in body bags or uh, going into, you know, severely damaged, either um, psychologically or physically, yeah, it just doesn't affect them, they think. Yeah. I mean, they, they don't. They don't recognize the effects. Maybe that's a better way of saying it. Yeah, that that would be, maybe so. Um, so I don't, I don't know why I don't know why that's suddenly coming to light. It it doesn't it doesn't help push the peace agenda. No. Um, and it just creates an embarrassment in a in a. I don't know in a weird way. Yeah, it it's definitely worth noting too that we can't seem to not be financially tied to some kind of major like giving money Mm -hmm. in a major way because we literally went from afghanistan to ukraine and now we're jumping from ukraine to israel well and that's the that's the crazy thing is they're not we're not really jumping because they're they're probably going to get that 105 billion dollar um military payments bill passed yeah and still 60 something billion dollars of it is going to fund the war for another year in ukraine yeah even so, though there are people talking about negotiating now, yeah, like there's, they're still there's pushing still a, a, another shipment still coming. Yeah, they're still pushing a bill to buy a whole bunch of weapons for Ukraine. Yeah, so of course they're buying weapons from American contractors, but yeah, still, yeah. Um, so, so I don't know that it's all gone, and they're I, and if they're trying to make us forget about it, then bringing up this doesn't uh, help. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I don't know. It's, it's just it's a little strange. No. There's there's some motive there that I'm not seeing, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, there has to be. So uh, 
speaking of all that stuff, I, um, I've been reading 1984. I'm actually like 30 pages from the end of it. I was really trying to finish it before we got this, this <laughs> podcast, but I, I didn't quite make it. Yeah. Um, I drove too fast on the way here. I don't, <laughs> I would, I would need a little while still. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, that's, that's 30 pages of that is 45 minutes of reading or something. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. Um, so it's pretty dense. I've never read it. I, I've seen the movie, but I've never read the book. I, uh, it's how I read. I, yeah. I end up having to reread stuff a lot because I start thinking about the last sentence I read and I'm not paying attention to the sentence <laughs> I'm reading right now. I'm glad I'm not the only one that does things like that. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I will be halfway through a paragraph sometimes and realize that I haven't picked up any, any bit of it because I was still thinking about the previous paragraph. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, so yeah, it just takes me some time. I gotcha. But I've been enjoying it. I, um, uh, I still think that a Brave New World is better. It's been a long time since I read Brave New World. Yeah. I still think that Brave New World is better. I think Brave New World is more realistic. I'll, I'll see if I can explain that later on. But yeah. there were some things in 1984 that really struck me um, as being interesting uh, in terms of of things today, like things that are going on in the news right now. Um, and I understand the comparison a little bit better uh, of the, you know, oh, he's 1984. I still, like I said, I still think this is more Brave New World than 1984, but I see some parallels. The parallels, yeah. Um, that That I find really interesting. And so... And actually, one of the first things that got me is, well, I guess, okay, so there's this whole thing about controlling information. Like, that's a huge part of it. Uh, yeah. And, and I, I think the real um, interesting insight that Orwell had in 1984 is um, about control of language. Yeah. I, I think that that's where he, where he saw something that, um, that Huxley didn't. Yeah. Um, is, is about the control of language. And and of course, we see a lot of that now too. Oh yeah. Uh, you can't say this word anymore. You have to use this word now instead. And I, that's yeah. no um, using the R word. This is the yeah. Which one? I don't. <laughs> There's so many. That's I, just I, it. I, I, <laughs> but, rape but or I, retarded? <laughs> oh, you sell them. <laughs> Both of them. Yeah, I'm not. Oh, demonetized. <laughs> yep. Um, <laughs> luckily, we don't. We're get any not money monetized. Out of this anyway. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, uh, yeah, there's, and I don't believe in no-no words. I think that that's just stupid. Yeah. I, but but there is a really interesting idea there about um, controlling language being a way of controlling the way people think. Yeah. And um, there's there's this idea that uh, that they, they're limiting, they're trying to eliminate words. Yeah. This, this is like a big part of what one of the characters does is el eliminate words from their, the language. Yeah. Uh, and, um, the purpose of it is to limit the range of thoughts that are available to somebody because we tend to yeah. verbalize our thoughts yeah. internally. Yeah. Uh, so the idea is that if they can eliminate enough words and the right words that the kind of unsanctioned or unauthorized thoughts aren't even possible. Yeah. <laughs> you just can't think that way because there's no word for it. There's no, yeah. um, there's no description in your head for what it is. It just becomes this kind of amorphous thing that you can't really, you can't grapple with. Yeah. You can't really think about in any kind of meaningful way. Yeah. Um, which is kind of an interesting, uh, and, and I think really insightful idea. Yeah. Uh, and I started thinking about if you read, um, you know, Common Sense or the Rights of Man or the Federalist Papers or even just like the Declaration of Independence and so forth, like the range of vocabulary used in those yeah. um, those documents and, and pamphlets and, and writings. Um, and just, you know, look at something even from just uh, end of the 19th century newspaper article. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then look at look at a piece in the New York Times today. Yeah. The the range of vocabulary, the specificity of the words used and so forth is um, has deteriorated tremendously. Yeah. 
And the expectation of what the average reader would be able to comprehend is also deteriorated tremendously. They were talking about that on um, uh, part of the problem today. Um, Just talking about going back to like, if you listen to like old, like, like sixties and seventies, like just speeches and like presidential debates and that type of thing that, and I'm actually curious, I'm going to, um, go back and listen to some of that type of stuff here, maybe this next week. Cause they, I heard them talking about it today, mm-hmm. but that just the range, just like what you're saying, the language and, and the conversation is just a deeper conversation than what you would have now. Like, yeah. I mean, you look, you watch the debates now and it is a joke. Um, Oh yeah. I, I thought of, uh, was it Family Guy where um, Lois was running for office and then yes. the debate she just keeps saying nine eleven? Yes, because okay. that's the nine eleven episode where yeah. yeah, 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 and that's that's really kind of I mean that's where we're heading, you know. And Donald Trump is like a, a good example of that of just like going to the lowest common denominator. Yeah, we're and gonna use like, a third graders' vocabulary. Yeah, yeah. Let's take it to kindergarten, mm-hmm. you know. <laughs> we're gonna use a lot of varies and reallys instead of more. Sp- specific words yeah yeah um so so i don't know like i say does i mean i guess that means they're winning i don't know (laughs) well i think you know honestly i think a big part of it is that people just don't read as much yeah yeah because reading is is huge for developing your vocabulary yeah and and i was i was telling my mom um last night we went to dinner last night and I, I was telling her, you know, I, I was realizing recently that my, not my most valuable, but my most valued yeah. possessions are my books. Yeah. <laughs> my most, most valued possessions are my books. It's probably pretty like that's pro- the most prominent thing in my living room is yeah, these the, sets the, of bookshelves. The bookshelves. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and I, I had a bunch of comments, um, when I was doing all this medical stuff over the last month yeah uh which is hopefully done with for now anyway um i'm developing different problems instead that i'm (laughs) avoiding going to the doctor for at this point but Mm. um you know everywhere i go if i'm going to be waiting at all sitting in a waiting room whatever i bring a book yeah and i had so many people comment to me that they don't see see physical books anymore yeah you don't yeah you don't see people reading yeah well, you see them reading just on their phone. Yeah, but even then, most of the time they're not reading. They're looking at pictures they're, on they're Facebook not, or They're whatever. not reading. They're scrolling. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, I think that that's a part of it anyway, is that, yeah. that people don't read so much, and so they don't develop vocabulary in the same way. Yeah. Uh, and even... So I, I mark passages in books as I go through. You see behind you on that um, desk... Actually, it's an old stereo, but... Um, I got that stack of uh, post-its. Yeah. And what those are for is when I come across interesting passages when I'm reading, yeah. I mark them. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, but, like, I don't have anything marked in 1984, even though I found it to be a really interesting book. Yeah. Because what I <laughs> what I tend to mark is beautiful language. Yeah. Yeah. Like, a- aesthetically pleasing paragraphs and so forth just something yeah. that that was some real wordsmithing yeah yeah mm-hmm. yeah um not as not as frequently because i tend to incorporate ideas and i don't need to go back and reread the ideas yeah for the most part but there's but the but, but there the are language. passages that are really well written that i like to go back to and read because they just yeah i don't know there's something they, really appealing about they them. speak to you yeah yeah um we could do a whole podcast of just Henry Miller. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, although I, then we would have to mark it explicit. I was going to say, is it going to have to be X-rated then? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. Um, but anyway, I, I did find this idea of manipulation of language to uh, control the population to be um, really interesting. And I, I thought about it in terms of just like the the uh, destruction of vocabulary in this country. Although I don't think that it's directed here. I think it's just a, a matter of... Um, people not being interested yeah yeah which is more brave new world by the way <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Is that, yeah um the other thing um was like really close to well so there's 
the idea that they, um, he who controls the the past controls the future, and he can, who controls the present controls the past. Oh, like, yeah. This was a, a an idea that comes up, and so what they're doing is they they the main character works at the miniature in Newspeak Ministry of Truth, yeah, which is uh, primarily concerned with lies, yeah, and what they're constantly doing is they're revising records of the past to reflect the present to yeah. make the the party yeah um look like it accurately predicted what's huh. happening now yeah. so any any time where they make a prediction that's false or not that's false that turns out to be wrong yeah they go and they they change edit it, it. Yeah. yeah they they <laughs> edit the prediction yeah. um and then destroy all the previous the remnants of what had been said at the time. Yeah. Right. And, um, and that's, and that's where this, the idea of the memory hole comes from that they literally at every little station, like all over this place, they have a, a little hole in the wall with a grate that they lifted up and anything that's not true anymore. Yeah. That's where it goes. <laughs> that's where it goes. And it yeah. gets incinerated somewhere. Hmm. Um, but I was thinking about that in a, a couple of recent news stories. Um, so, they tried to do this with the New Yorker, or not the New Yorker, the New York Post article on uh, Biden's laptop, the yeah. Hunter Biden laptop. Yeah. Um, it, it's kind of amazing how they can more or less do this in real time with social media and so forth. And then it's like a week or so ago, um, they uh, the same kind of thing was done. Somebody, I guess on um, TikTok or something, uh rediscovered or discovered for the first time, probably for them, yeah. uh, uh, Osama bin Laden's letter to America. Yeah. Now it was published in its entirety by the guardian in November of 2002. Like this has been it's around been for, a for a time. long time. Yeah. Um, and then they actually talked on no agenda about how they, they said that it, well, it seems like an op, you know, there's all these people that are saying they're using the same words and so forth. I actually tend to think in that case that, it's somebody on TikTok um, did a little thing about it, and then it was trending, and then all the other people jumped on and tried to produce something very similar because it was a, a topic that was blowing up, and they wanted to get in on the action. Yeah. Um, I could be wrong about that. Like, maybe it was some kind of organized uh, I, I, thing. I tend but, to, to be with you on that one. Just because I've spent enough time on social media and kind of seen how it operates. Mm -hmm. What you're saying makes a lot more sense than it being some kind of op. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I think so too. It's just, you know, people trying to jump on the trending bandwagon. Exactly. Yeah. But, um, like this is something that's been around for a while now, whether it's genuinely Osama bin Laden or not, isn't really the point. And you know, the takes that you were hearing, like some of those people are idiots. Yeah. Is, is yeah. all I can is all I can say, <laughs> and we've talked about this letter a couple of times on the podcast, yeah. um, and I, I suppose that the I didn't listen to any of this, but I suppose that the prevailing point was that one of Osama bin Laden's big griefs was American support for Israel um, in their oppression of the Palestinians. Yeah, because that that was one of the big that points. Was, yeah, uh, I mean it was also. Um, having military bases and the holiest sites of Islam and, um, continually bombing Iraq and being responsible for the deaths of, you know, hundreds of thousands of, of people and, yeah. you know, um, coming in and controlling their territory and not leaving when asked and, you know, all kinds of stuff. But yeah. basically um, us fooling around over there yeah, because that's all throughout the nineties. That's all we did. <laughs> I mean, we can, we can sometime in the future do a more in-depth, um, talk about that that letter yeah uh the point i was wanting to make here though is that um it was a, it was taken down by the guardian after 20 years yeah <laughs> when it started trending when it started coming up yeah yeah and you know even if people have the wrong take or a stupid take or um it's exposing some things that you don't want exposed or whatever like the idea that you can take this historical document and when people are saying the wrong things about it, just get rid of it. Yeah. Yeah. That, like it was never there. <laughs> yeah. And that, that seems to be, I don't know within the past 10 years or so, I would say like 
more recently. That just seems to be the answer now. Yeah. Instead of, I think it's more like the last like three. Yeah. I I, I think it, I think this is a really recent development. Yeah. Um. The apparent ability, and I don't even know how it's done, honestly, um, to scrub the internet. Yeah. Of all traces of some particular document. Yeah. It's it's wild. Yeah. Um, and it's not it's not a good road to be heading down. Luckily, we still have archive.is. Yeah, right now. <laughs> well, I mean, and that might be under attack too. Like some of these, uh, um, what what's the freedom of the internet? Free and open internet. The, yeah. Uh, um, the net neutrality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of the things that it seems to be trying to address as well are whether archive sites are copyright violators. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, like, uh, well, the original site took down that article, and so you know, archive it should be site gone forever. Was, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and hmm, yeah, interesting. Um, so I don't know that that kind of stood out to me as well. And then, uh, oh, on the language control, I do want to tell this story because it's it's just kind of silly. So I used to work at this call center that we took. Um, well, I took a, a particular kind of call there, which was um, mostly employee complaints. Yeah. Uh, they also could be customer complaints as well. The idea was that um, if if somebody had a complaint about like a general manager or somebody high up at a location, that they could call us to report, a third-party service to report the issue and we could go around that manager to higher level, yeah. you know, district region, what corporate office, yeah. um, in, instead of having to report your problem with a person to that person, to the person. Yeah. That usually doesn't end well. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, that was the idea of it. Most of it ended up being kind of like my boss is mean to me calls. Yeah. And this was one of those calls. And, um, it was these two girls, I, only one of them was on the phone. The other one was in the background. I could hear her every once in a while, and they're complaining about all these things that their their boss does, yeah. um, which are, a lot of it, as I recall, were like pretty typical, like, well, you work for this person kind of things. <laughs> you were yeah. asked to do he, a job. <laughs> he, he expects you to be there on time. I can't believe that man. You know? Yeah, right. But um, she, she gives me this litany of problems that she has, she and her friend. Yeah. And, um, and she says... And we, we feel that this is very, very ungood. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I couldn't help myself. <laughs> of course not. <laughs> I said, ungood. You mean like bad? <laughs> yeah, that too, right? Talk about a, a, a deterioration of vocabulary here, right? <laughs> yeah. Right. But now that I've read 1984, I realize that, well, she's just way ahead, actually. <laughs> yeah, is that right? Ungood is one of their words. Is it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah they got rid of bad. Oh, yeah. Because it can be covered by ungood. <laughs> ungood is better. And if it's really bad, it's double plus ungood. This is oh. one of the things that I learned. Oh, no. Nice. So, yeah. Um, Interesting. <laughs> so I, I hadn't read 1984 at that time, and I, I thought she was stupid, but... <laughs> Apparently she had yeah, read it. <laughs> yeah. Now now I wish I could go back and comment differently. <laughs> yes. But uh, oh, anyway, the, the other thing that... Um, and, and as far as technology goes... So, so there's a lot of talk about the, uh, the one big thing. And I know I'm kind of jumping around on this because I got a lot of... I, I'm, I'm, just finishing reading this over the last few days. So I got like a whole bunch of thoughts bouncing around in my head about it. Yeah. Um, th- this department that the main character works in that is uh, about finding these discrepancies in the past and fixing them. Yeah. Uh, and so forth. Um, he, he speaks early on that they have like, he's in a room with like hundreds of people and it's only one small part of one small department within this you know and he's talking about there you know there must be thousands and thousands and thousands of people working for this department doing this kind of thing yeah and i thought what a tremendous waste of public resources because this is all government jobs right yeah like you have this this huge section of government workers dedicated to propaganda essentially um, bless you. 
Thank you. Um, and controlling information and fixing old information and tracking down the information that doesn't comply and um, tracking down all the the sources of what has been fixed now, getting rid of the originals and like, you know, imagine all this <laughs> manpower dedicated to this thing that's completely, <sighs> bless you, completely unproductive. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I thought about our talk uh, last week about... Um, uh, Argentina. Yeah. And, <laughs> and the public how, sector workers. Yeah. And how there are 20 million people there being paid by the government and 6 million people working in the private sector That's that wild. have, whose taxes have to pay for the 20 million people that are getting paid by the government. Yeah. Um, and I thought this is how this society is set up. And, and there's, there is a lot of talk about, uh, how they siphon off wealth that this was one of the problems that they saw. Like that capitalism was a failure because it created all this excess. Yeah. Um, and the excess made people complacent and um, and uncontrollable because they were comfortable. Yeah. And so you had to, in order to control them, you need to keep them, you need to reintroduce the scarcity. But you have to have all, you have all this stuff working. Yeah. And so how do you get rid of the excess? What do you do? And of course their answer was perpetual war. Like we yeah. siphon off the extra wealth into perpetual war, into things that are ultimately destructive in nature. Yeah. Um, but I thought at the same time, they didn't talk about this specifically, but I thought at the same time, they've got all these people employed by the state Yeah. Right. that are, are not doing anything productive. <laughs> and, yeah. and so that produces scarcity in and of itself. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I, I, but the other thing besides war that they invested their resources in was surveillance. Yeah. Like they have this really strong surveillance state, police state. Yeah. Um, and uh, they have in every party members, in fact, every room within the, the greater part of society, which is actually only something like um, 17% of the population, the rest are proletariat that they don't care about at all. Yeah. They're essentially like human animals is the way they look at them. That, they don't even try to control. They're just like poor people out there scraping together things. They don't have to worry about them because, you know, if you're worried about where your next meal is going to come from, you're not real concerned with overthrowing the state. That's kind of, <laughs> yeah. um, which by the way is why I think this wouldn't work. That's, that's exactly the approach that the Israelis made with the Palestinians. Yeah. Is like, and they're attacking the state. Yeah, <laughs> limit the resources. And if they're, if they're concerned enough just with surviving from day to day, they won't fight back. Yeah. Obviously that's not, that's true. not true. Yeah. Um, but they have, uh, these telescreens everywhere is what they call them. Um, and it's both a, a send and receive device like a TV. Yeah. But like a modern TV. Yeah. And that's why I was thinking of it, that this is interesting that it, you know, you receive messages, yeah. um, video and, and audio from the thing. But, it can also look in on you yeah. and listen to everything that you're doing. And I, so I started thinking immediately about like, well, you know, this surveillance technology exists today. Mm -hmm. Like we carry them around with us in our pockets. Say, it's in my pocket um, all day long. You know, the vault seven materials, I'm pretty sure it was, uh, was what revealed that the, the, um, intelligence agencies have the ability to, if your TV has a, a, uh, a camera in it, yeah. they can look through the camera. And yeah. they can listen through the microphone at all times. And the same thing with your phone. With your phone, yeah. Yep. Yeah. And I was like, oh, wow, this has come to be real. <laughs> yeah. Um, this part right here. It's just a matter of whether you have enough people employed by the state to listen all the time. That's well, the and question. if they've got the ability to just... Because I think the biggest concern would be that they just capture it and store it. And then can pull it when they need it. Yeah. Like, so there may to, not be like a live person sitting down listening mm -hmm. to your conversation. But when you become enough of a problem. Exactly. They have an archive of stuff to start digging through. Yeah. To find something to. Exactly. To hold you responsible for. Yeah. Indict you for. Um, That's why if you're having those conversations, you leave the phone. <laughs> yeah. And then. <laughs> but here it is sitting here and we're actually recording this stuff, putting it out there on the airwaves. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Um, and then there was the idea of doublethink, which they uh, defined as holding two contradictory beliefs at the same time. Oh, yeah. I, and I thought that that's just something that exists outside of the Libertarian Party. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like all, all political thinkers outside of the Libertarian Party. Like think of um, 
think of the Trump haters. Yeah. That um, he's this evil genius playing 4D chess with all of us, but all, also he's a buffoon. But he's an idiot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, you know, can't figure out how to do anything on his own. And you know, yeah. I don't know. There's that kind of thing all the time. Uh, yeah. I, on the right, I think of it as the, like, it's wrong to take a person's life, but we believe in capital punishment. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think about the whole conservative, you know, small government, we need the small government, mm-hmm. but then we need a huge military. Right. It's like these two are not the same things. Yeah. Like, and in fact, the one leads to the other. Exactly. So they're, they're self reinforcing, it's a feedback loop. Exactly. Um, and, and there's a lot of that stuff on the left, too. I, you know, this is, this is not quite the same thing, but I think of um, Jen Briney on Congressional Dish going back to the public private oh, yeah, uh, yeah. incomes thing. Um, when she was doing some reporting on Puerto Rico, the Puerto Rican government that was just failing um, terribly financially. And they laid off a whole bunch of public sector workers. Yeah. And she was like, how can they do this when they can't cover their budget, when they're not earning enough uh, tax income to cover their budget? That's a whole bunch of tax revenue that they just got rid of. <laughs> like, no. You, you, they, you, 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 you're, you're leaving something out there. Yeah, <laughs> like, that, their income comes from taxes. From, yeah, exactly. Like, they're just... They're just Pouring money out of a pot and then pouring some of it back in. That's not... <laughs> yeah, that's not the same thing. <laughs> They're actually definitely saving money on... Uh, by letting them go. <laughs> yeah, by not paying them anything. And now um, they can go into the real economy and be actually productive. Right. <laughs> Except there wasn't much of a real economy. Well, that, that's a know. shame, but... Um, and then, uh, I don't know, just like a couple other things, they, um, they use... Well, uh, besides using war to f- siphon off resources, they also use the the whatever group they happen to be at war with um, to focus to to be a, a like a focus of hate. Yeah. Um, for the population, so that they you know all their aggression is towards this external enemy instead of the internal one. Yeah, that's um, a very common like idea from dictators and yeah. whatnot. <laughs> Um, and then finally, uh, I guess the, the last thing is this, um, that they like heavily discourage sex, uh, especially with women, um, with the idea that it was easier to divert the sex drive of women than it is to divert the sex drive of men. I don't know that that's really true, but, um, anyway, I, I started thinking of like, our society works more on the brave new world model. Like the, the 1984 model was to just make sex itself a sin. Yeah. Essentially. Um, the brave new world model encouraged sex, but not reproduction. And I, yeah. I think that that's kind of where we are. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah Cause we definitely encourage sex. <laughs> yeah. Get out there, be promiscuous, you know, um, yeah. a whole bunch of meaningless sex, but, uh, use birth control, Um, you know, now there's the, the trans push, like to get you to, to, um, uh, self sterilize essentially. Um, once you get to the cross sex hormone part anyway, um, the, the climate change scare, like, you know, tell people we're all going to die anyway. So you, and, and, and the number of human beings on this planet is the problem like to discourage them from having children. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a lot of that going on, but, but the way that it's done in, in, um, contemporary society is I think more on the brave new world model. Like, yeah. and so that's, that, that's what I, I guess we're coming around to in the end. Um, 1984, the authoritarianism relied on fear and force. Yeah. And, um, the brave new world model, uh, the authoritarianism relied on, um, pleasure and desire. Yeah. Like to meet, to meet your desires to, um, essentially in inundate you with pleasure. So you weren't concerned like that. You were with happy effort. with your slavery. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and that's why I think that that's more effective. And I think that that's more the direction that we're going while there's some aspects of our society that do seem like the authoritarian model of 1984. I think a lot more of them, of the authoritarian aspects of our society are more on the brave new world model where it's this like very insidious 
like subversive control. Yeah. Um, it's not an overt control because, because people rebel against force. Oh uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, but if you can lull people into complacency, that's a whole lot easier to control people. Yeah. Um, if you just, if there's, if they're so content, then they don't fight back. Even if they're, if they've lost power over their own lives. Yeah. Um, and so, I, yeah, I think that the Brave New World model is the scarier model to begin with. And I also think it's the model that, that, that we're seeing that we see more the of the most. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's probably like a mix. I don't know, like an 80, 20 <laughs> yeah. on the Brave New World thing. Yeah. Um, I did want to, talk a little bit about the the three uh slogans of the party in 1984 though I, I, yeah. like, I want to hear what you have to say about this because I, I found these kind of interesting yeah. um the first one is well i'll just do all three and then we'll do them one by one all right um so the the slogans are war is peace freedom is slavery ignorance is strength yeah <laughs> all right um so war is peace go <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean it just I don't know. It it seems so. I mean, they're they're. I guess it wants you to conflate the two, maybe. I um. That. Uh, well, this is part of the double think. Yeah. Idea. Um, I think it's just it's just confusing. Yeah. But what I thought of is the the Pax Americana. Yeah. Right. Just like the Pax Romana. Like the the truth is that these these peace through force things yeah. are never actually peaceful. Yeah. Like there's constant, there's constant war in Pax Americana. Like just like there was constant war uh, during the Pax Romana. Yeah. Um, the, the idea that the, uh, that the power, the military power of the United States is bringing peace to the world is just oh, completely yeah. fallacious. <laughs> yeah. And, um, but that's, that's what I thought of when I was, when I was reading that particular slogan, this idea that war is peace, like, okay, that we're bringing peace by going and fighting everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Um, or encouraging, like, even if we're not fighting ourselves, encouraging it like we are in Ukraine. Ukraine yeah. Um, or Sudan or, <laughs> you yeah. know, wherever. I mean, name the place. It's yeah. all over. Um, freedom is slavery. Uh, See, like this, this one actually kind of fits back into that Brave New World model, I think. Yeah. Um, I doubt that's how Orwell meant it. I, I think Orwell meant it once again as this kind of double think, yeah. um, idea. But, uh, but the idea they, this society has redefined freedom. Yeah. In a lot of ways, and so freedom now isn't the ability to make your own choices about your life the way we would define freedom. Yeah. Freedom is now the freedom from worry. Yeah. Uh, like security is freedom now. Yeah. Um, and so it, it is a way of, of aligning freedom with slavery. Like let the government control every aspect of your life. That way you don't have to worry about anything. Now you're free. Well, and this, it, I'm wondering maybe if this isn't a form of that trying to change the language. So taking two words that mean opposite things mm -hmm. and trying to make them make the same mean the same thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Synonymize if that's a word. Yeah. Um, and yeah. if it's not, then we just added another one. Hey, then we got a new one, baby. Um, yeah, synonymizing war and peace and freedom yeah. and slavery. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think that that's, yeah, that's definitely, um, that's definitely a part of it with this. Yeah. Um, and then the last one was uh, ignorance is strength. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't even know how to address that. I. Um, yeah. <laughs> ignorance is strength. I mean, I, I guess... You know, we, we once again we see a lot of that in um, in the disengagement with uh, political life yeah. in this country. Like that, there's there's a whole lot of people that I guess are engaged in political life in the fact that they participate, yeah. but they're not engaged in the sense that they understand. Yeah. 
Which is a big part of what's wrong with the country in general. Mm-hmm. Like, and democracy in particularly. democracy, yeah, exactly. I mean, I don't have a problem with you being disengaged from politics. I mm-hmm. mean, you live your life the way you want to. Yeah, but, but then, quit trying to make decisions for the rest of us. Exactly, but if that's <laughs> the case, don't go vote, don't go Don't go putting out opinions on the stuff that you don't that you haven't looked into and don't understand mm-hmm. um i don't know that's just my opinion but i i feel like that's you a could big, be wrong i could be <laughs> <laughs> it happens every now and then wasn't that uh dennis miller's thing oh uh, that's just mm-hmm. my opinion i could be wrong yeah and then his tagline that's something like that yeah um yeah anyway I, like i did find it interesting it, it uh I do think that we see more of the kind of sedative style of authoritarianism, like in Brave New World. It doesn't actually require the drugs, um, yeah. you know, uh, ubiquitous pornography and social media is enough. Yeah. Well, and there's plenty of drugs being prescribed out there. I mean, all That's of these. That's true, too. But you don't even need it. I mean, like those yeah. other things are perfectly good substitutes. It's yeah. like this kind of Pavlovian um, uh uh, set up of authoritarianism. Like you, you reward them for being passive. Yeah. And that way you, you get you control keep them that way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Whereas, you know, back around to, uh, in the 1984 style, it's back around to that Lakota proverb that I like so much that force, no matter how concealed begets resistance. Yeah. Like the use of force to control people is going to, it it's going to, it has um, an adverse side effect. Yeah, it's going to be <laughs> reacted to with rebellion. Yeah, every time. Um, whereas if you can hide that force, yeah, like completely, yeah. the proverbs, of course, no matter how concealed, yeah, begets resistance. But um, if you can make it seem like a, a, a positive decision that you're making, yeah, yeah, it's far more effective. Yeah, because you made that decision. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's like manipulating somebody into a, um, a a poor power relationship with you. Yeah. But they feel like they made that choice. Exactly. Like, and that's what they wanted. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so uh, anyway, I, I have found the book interesting. It's a shame that I'm so close to the end but hadn't quite finished it. I might have, I mean, there might be something like really revealing in the last 30 or 40 pages. <laughs> yeah. Um, that I'm missing out on so far, but we'll know about tomorrow, <laughs> but yeah. not in time for this podcast. Yeah. Um, man, that so, took up a lot of time. I yeah. don't know that that was really the plan. Um, Solid book, book review. Is it? I don't know. <laughs> uh, so would you recommend it? I, I would recommend it. I, um, yeah. I would more strongly recommend Brave New World. Really? Okay. I, I think Brave New World is more the the form of authoritarianism authoritarianism in 1984 can't be missed. Yeah. yeah. Um, like I said, the form of authoritarianism in Brave New World is far more insidious. Yeah. So reading that one will prepare you more in terms of things that you should be on the lookout for. Yeah. Uh, and there's plenty of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, 1984, I don't think that you need to be directed in that way. Like it would be yeah. apparent to you that yeah. you were in an authoritarian regime. Whereas yeah. the the Brave New World authoritarian regime is uh, much more subtle. Yeah. Um, it, it manipulates you based on what you want, not by force. It, it yeah. uh, draws you towards your, it uses your desires to enslave you. Hmm. Interesting. Um, it's been, a, I, I need to go back and read that too. It's been a long time since I read Brave New World, but I, man, I loved that one when I yeah, read it. Yeah. Well, you'll um, have a lot of time this weekend, right? No. Flying, right? Y- yeah. You um, want to read on the plane? I do read on the plane. Um, I do need to pick something else. I don't have, I don't own Brave New World anymore. Oh, really? Yeah. It, <laughs> there are a lot of books that used to be in those bookshelves that aren't there. <laughs> that are gone. And uh, it's just, People have a people have a different view of ownership these days too. So you lend out a book and you make it clear that you're lending out a book and you you just never get it back. That's the end of that book. Yeah. Um I have I have actually spent a lot of money over the years replacing books that I had lent out to people yeah. that I still wanted yeah. in my bookshelves. And I, I never replaced Brave New World. There's another Huxley book that my um a roommate of mine had when I was living in Atlanta. And I can't remember the name of it, and I cannot find it. Like, I have a vague memory of the plot line, and so I keep reading plot lines of all these Huxley books, and I'm like, that's not it. Yeah. That's not it. I cannot find can't it. Can't find it. 
Um, and I wish I was still in touch with him. Maybe, maybe he would remember. Maybe he still has it, but he probably lent it out and the person didn't get it back. <laughs> didn't get it back. Yeah. Um, but uh, oh well, that one's that one's maybe lost. I'm just gonna have to buy every Huxley book until I find it. Until again. you find it. <laughs> uh, so if you're out there looking for Christmas gifts, uh, actually I don't know that I. I think I own one Huxley book, and I don't remember which one it is now. Yeah. But it's not Brave New World, and it's not um, Doors of Perception, which is another one that I want to read. Although that one's nonfiction. Yeah. Um, but I like nonfiction stuff. Yeah. I've had to actively force myself to read fiction again recently. Is is yeah. Those of you who have been listening may recall. Yeah. Um, but I did finish that book on uh, Bonnie and Clyde. That was so good. Yeah. Go down together. I recommend that one. That was a um, that was a really that was a really interesting, fun. Well, fun is kind of rough. Uh, I don't know if fun's the right word, but um, fascinating anyway. Book to read. Yeah. I need a different podcast just to talk about books <laughs> book review podcast yeah um all right well we better wrap it up because now we've wasted like five more minutes and just kind of prattling on and uh so we won't be back next week we will not be back next week uh, probably not um i may i may be able to record while i'm out of town oh that would be cool i'm gonna try um even if i am i'm not sure how able i am to post yeah, the podcast. So, uh, I mean, we'll just have to see. I, like, hopefully, we can get something up, but I wouldn't expect it. Okay. Um, I, and in fact, if I if I do record, chances are I won't have it up until I'm back. Yeah. Uh, which won't be next week. Yeah. So, um, anyway, so it'll probably be two weeks before we're back. Okay. And uh, but in the meantime, we still want you to follow us on Facebook, subscribe on iTunes, YouTube, Podbean. Like and share, comment, refer a friend. Yep. Um, you can always email me at michael at thelibertymike.com. Uh, what else is there? I do still have a Substack at uh, Michael's Meditations. Uh, I still haven't posted on it in like two months. Oh, wow. I didn't realize you had went that long. Yeah, it's been a while. <laughs> it's been a bit of a dry spell. <laughs> well, you know, what's funny about it is that I, like, I've got a bunch of things that I kind of want to write about that have been bouncing around in my head and I just can't bring myself to sit down and start writing. Uh, I don't think it would be that hard if I just... Once you made like set in front yeah, of the computer and done yeah, it. Or yeah, or pen to paper, whatever. Yeah. Um, I just haven't done it. I'm not real good at... Uh, I'm not getting real good at schedules. Yeah. Deadlines, I, I things like say, that. I was going to say getting I'm, started, right? Yeah, that's another thing. I'm not very good at finishing either. So, <laughs> yeah, but that time in the middle, man. <laughs> yeah, I, I can I can throw some stuff together, like once I've started and um, until it comes time to wrap it up. Yeah, yeah. That that's where the, that's where <laughs> that's the, where my strength <laughs> lies. Yeah. Uh, oh well. Um, hopefully, I can get back into it. I did enjoy doing that for a little bit. I yeah. Um, I I think it's I think I'm not sure what that was becoming. Yeah. Um, because my idea of what it was going to be was different than what I was doing. Yeah. And so I think it's kind of maybe turned more into uh, memoirs. Yeah. Kind of like just writing about experiences in my life. Yeah. Um, and then there's some experiences in my life that I'm like, I would like to write about it. This is interesting. But the idea of who all would be reading it <laughs> becomes questionable. Yeah. Yeah. It makes me a little uncomfortable. So, and then, you know, hiding the names of the other people uh, involved. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. So, I don't know. I'll figure it out. Yeah. I mean, the thing exists. So, I, I will add to it again. Yeah. At some point, I just got to figure out, I got to figure out what I want it to be. I guess that's fair. Um, but anyway, uh, so we'll be back not w next week, but the week after uh, when we finally get this right. And in the meantime, try to stay free. Life's short, live free. Ciao. Later. Mm -hmm.